Howdy, everybody. Here we are all ready to take you down to Pine Ridge for another visit with Lum and Abner. Brought to you by the makers of Horlicks, the original malted milk. But first, I have something to say that I feel is very important. All this week, thousands of people like ourselves will be buying malted milk for themselves and for their families. Now, I feel I can't use my time to better advantage tonight than to remind all our listeners who are going to buy malted milk to ask for and get Horlicks, the original and genuine. Not to accept one of the inferior imitations of Horlicks that are flooding the market. My friends, you don't get a bargain when you buy a substitute for Horlicks. That substitute may even be a mixture of skim milk, inferior malt powder, and ordinary sugar. Now, that's no way to buy, especially when the health of your family and yourself is at stake. So I advise that you always ask for Horlicks and insist on it. Horlicks, which contains all the nourishment of rich, full cream milk and the finest of malted grains. You won't be disappointed then, for Horlicks always gives results. Keep a package on hand. It has so many uses. You can get it, you know, at your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. Ask for Horlicks at the fountain, too. You are entitled to the best. And now, let's see what's happening down in Pine Ridge. Well, when we left Lum and Abner last week, they had just received a telephone call from Squire Skimp, who was in charge of their circus at the county seat, informing them that a heavy windstorm had blown down the tent and that the two elephants and some of the other animals had broken loose and were terrorizing the citizens of the town. <laughs> well, the old fellows made a hurried trip to the county seat to straighten out the difficulty. And apparently everything is running smoothly again, for as we look in on Pine Ridge today, we find Lum and Abner down at the Jotham Down store, where Grandpappy Spears is looking after Lum's interests. Listen. Well, uh, Lum, if you're going to be here at the store for a few minutes, I'll take this batch of groceries on over to Seastrunks. She says she's in a hurry for him. Yeah, all right, Grandpappa. I'll stay here till you get back. Me and Abner's got some business to straighten out here. Yeah, go ahead, Grandpap. <laughs> that voice of yours, Abner, sounds like you're hollering down a well. Yeah, you reckon them spectacles of mine could have affected my voice too long? I don't know. It might have. Yeah, I believe they'd give me a cold somewhere. Affected like. my head. I mean, it's give me a headache. I know that. Oh. Well, let's get down to business. What do you want to do, Abner? You want to give up, quit right here, or go on? Well, we... Might wait and see how we come out over at Belleville this week before we decide. If we don't do no better than we done in there at the county seat, I'm in favor of just getting shut of it. Well, I still don't see what kept us from making some money in there, Lum. They had uncommonly big crowds. Yeah, but the expenses is eating us up. The overhead. The what? The overhead. Well, why don't we just cut that out then? Cut out the overhead? Yeah, if that's what keeps us from making money, why we can just cut it out. Well, we got to have some overhead. No, I don't know, Lum. Not with this pretty weather. I, I believe we can do without it. If it rains, why we can just call the show off. You don't even know what I'm talking about. What's the weather got to do with the overhead? Well, we just wouldn't need no tent if the weather stays the pretty. The tent ain't overhead, Abner. Well, it's supposed to be. That's what a tent's for. The overhead ain't got nothing to do with a tent. It's the... Oh, now, I, I, I know what you're talking about now, sure. <laughs> What's the matter with me? <laughs> why, uh, why don't why don't we fire every one of them trapeze performers, Aunt Lummy, if they're what's run up the expense? Abner, for goodness sake. Just because the trapeze performers is up in the top of the tent, that ain't no sign they're overhead. Well, maybe they ain't, but they sure look like it to me from where I was sitting. Well, they're overhead, but they ain't overhead. Overhead is expenses, like what the elephants eat. That's overhead. Oh, you, you mean hay, huh? Well, why didn't you say so? What huh? all animals eat and what the fat woman eats and all. You mean the fat woman's eating hay, too? Oh, I'll swan, Abner, you're the hardest fellow to explain anything to I've ever seen in my life. The overhead is all the expense of the circus. Squire Skimp is overhead. He is? All the advertising, wages we're paying the performers and all such as that. You see, any business has got overhead to it. Man, what if they don't have no elephants to eat hay? They'll have some other kind of overhead, like here in the store. Uh, the business here, my overhead is Grandpappy Spears. If it wasn't for the overhead, a body could make money in any business. Well, if I was you, then I'd just fire Grandpappy. Get somebody in here. It weren't no overhead. Well, it ain't his fault. Can't you make him stop it? Stop what? 
Why be in overhead expense, eating hay or whatever it is he's doing? He ain't doing nothing, I told you. If I got somebody else in here, it'd be the same thing. Well, I swan to goodness. You still don't know what I'm talking about, Abner. What I'm trying to tell you is we've got so many expenses, they're eating up the profits. I'm trying to figure out where the trouble's at. Yeah. Well, it just looks to me like there's too much eating going on. Well, just forget about the eating. Now, here's a statement Squire made out for us when we was in there Saturday showing what we took in and showing all the expenses. It is. And that's what I called you to come over here first so that we could sit down and figure this thing out. You mean that you think he's made a mistake in his figures, huh? No, but we can tell by this where we can cut down some of the overhead. According to these figures here, we uh, taken in $416 for the two days in there. Well, fine. Yeah, let's see now. Half of uh... Uh, $416. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Hold on. That's what we're taking in. Don't start dividing it up yet. Well, I thought we was in partners on it. Half of it belonged to yeah, me. Yeah, but that's what I'm trying to tell you. The overhead ate it up. You mean to say that Squire and the elephants and the fat woman ate up $416 no, worth of overhead? No, they ain't, they ain't the only overhead we've got, Abner. Well, Grandpappy Spirit ain't eating off the circus, too, is he? Abner, if you'll be quiet a minute, I'll explain the whole thing to you. Here, I'll read Squire's report and you can see for yourself. Well, I doubt where I can see it with these spectacles on, but go ahead and read it. I'll take your word for it. These are the biggest figures Squire made I've ever seen in my life. I can't see them. Looks that way through these spectacles. Receipts, that's the amount we took in, see, $416. Uh-huh. Uh, expenses, this is the overhead. Here's where we've got to find the leak. I thought you said it, it weren't the tenth. Shut up and listen. I'll explain it to you. Feed thing. for the animals, $87. Moving circus to county seat, $40. Yeah. Performers and circus hands, wages, $160. That's awful high. Advertising, that's uh, handbills and the one sheets, I believe he called them, and posters and stuff like that, $92. $92? Yeah. Well, we've got to advertise it. We're going to get anybody to come in there. Yeah, it's a lot money. of money. A lot of money. Damages on tent when blown down by a windstorm, $38. Damage is done by an elephant when he broke loose. That's that fruit stand he wrecked. $26. Yeah, well, I'm surprised to get out of that. Squire said he just tore that whole thing up. Oh, yeah. Expense of recapturing animals, rewards, and so forth, $43. Squire said that included some damages that the camels and the zebra done when they was loose, too. Yeah. And feed for the fat woman, two days, in parentheses. 16... In where? In parentheses. I thought it was in the county seat. Well, it was, but well, never mind. Two days, $16. You mean it cost $16 to feed her for two days? That's what he's got down here. I asked Squire about that, and he said that's money well spent, though. See, the more she eats, the fatter she'll get, and the fatter she gets, the uh, more people want to see her, and the more people who want to see her, the more money we'll make. Yeah, but she ought to feed herself, Lom. We, we can't afford to buy a grub for her. Of course, more to feed her than it will them two elephants. Yeah, but Squire said we'll make it on, all back on the slim man, though. She made the same kind of a deal with him. Oh, well, that's all right, then. See here, next item. Food for slim man, dollar and twenty cents. Uh-huh. Incidental expense, $20. That's the last item. What's that? Incidental? Well, it's, uh... Huh? Well, it's just little things that he had to buy. Tickets and paint and extra help and one thing or another. Anyway, the whole thing figures up to $522.20, making us lose $106.20. We lost that much money? Yes, yeah, Squire had to stand some of the performers off before they, before they could get him to let him move the circus on over to Belleville. Well, now, they ought to be paid, Lon. I know it. It's got me worried to death. Oh, my. And we owe $50 to that trucking company for moving them over to Belleville. Is that what they charge? Yeah. Of course, if they do well over there at Belleville, we might can pay them off and make a little money ourselves. That is, if they don't have no windstorm to blow the tent down again. Now, that's what ruined us in there at the county seat, that storm. Yeah. But you know what I'm mean? I don't trust that squire too far, neither. We, we ain't got no way of telling where he's turning all the money he took in or not. Well, I don't know, Abner. I can't help but believe squire's honest about this report. Well, I, I believe one of us ought to sell tickets, and then we know it. we're getting all the money that comes in there. Well, I can't do it with these spectacles, I bought, I know. See, they magnify things so bad, don't nothing look right. Dime looks about like a half a dollar to me. I can't even make change in the store. Well, why don't you take your spectacles off then? Well, I can't see nothing then. I've wore these glasses now to where I have to keep them on. What about you selling tickets? Oh, I couldn't see nothing, Mom. I can't see nothing with mine on or without them either one. 
You know, Abner, I hate to say this, for he appeared to be such a nice feller, but that blame if I don't believe that spectacle salesman give us a very good fit in them glasses we bought off of him. Well, I, I would like to say nothing either, Lon, but I'm beginning to have my suspicions about him myself. He said that my eyes get used to him, but I dog it, I believe they're getting worse. Yeah, I bound you these specs had something to do with these headaches we've been having. Well, I tried to see him in there Friday, but he ain't with the circus no more. Why, he is, darn it. I've seen him talk with him. No, no, that ain't the same fella, Lon. They look alike, but I jumped on him about these spectacles of mine not fitting, and he said that he never had saw me before. Yeah, he tried to tell me that, too, but I... Wait a minute, that's the store ring. Somebody wants some groceries, I reckon. Yeah. Hello? This is a jot down store, and I'm at talking. Mom? Oh, all right, I'll hold it. <laughs> Belleville calling. Must be Squire making a report. Yeah, must be. I hope they ain't had no more storms over there. Hello? This is him. Blow that tent down. Yeah, I allowed it was you, Squire. <laughs> yeah, how was business today? Huh? What's the reason you never? $200? Well, that's a pretty good business, yeah. Well... Abner's here now. We, we'll try to raise it some way or other. I, I'll call you back after a while. All right. Goodbye. Squire says there's a city license there at Belleville, and it'll cost us $200 cash before we can open the circus up. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> well, we just wonder how long Lum is going to be able to make enough money out of the Jotham Down store to keep that circus running. Ladies and gentlemen... In the following short scene, we find that the phone in Harry Benton's office is ringing. Let's see who's calling. Hello? Who? Oh, send him up, Miss Lawrence. <laughs> oh, Bill Jackson. Wonder what he's doing in town. Oh, hey, this way, Bill. Oh, there you are. New office, huh? Yeah. Well, how have you been, Bill? Okay, how's yourself? Can't complain. In town for long? Long enough for lunch. Come on, let's go. Oh, I'm sorry, Bill. Not right away. You wouldn't turn me down. Oh, no. I'll be with you pretty soon. Sit down and wait. And starve? Not me. Hungry, eh? I'll soon fix that. I don't know how. No one's ever done so yet. Tell you what, I'll make a deal. What sort of deal? If I can fix your hunger without spoiling your appetite, you buy me a lunch. Otherwise, I buy you one. On the level? On the level. You count me in. Bleed out that magic meal. No, it's not a meal. But it does seem as if it's magic. Just Horlicks malted milk tablets. Horlicks, eh? Hmm? Why, we give them to the youngsters. Yeah? Well, just dissolve a couple of these in your own mouth while I start thinking about that lunch you're paying for. And Harry's right. Horlick's tablets never fail to ward off that hungry feeling. And they don't spoil appetites. You'll find them very handy around the office, as well as useful on many occasions. Get a flask from your druggist in either natural or chocolate flavor. This is Carlton Bricker, speaking for Lum and Abner and Horlick's, who now bid you all good night and good health. <laughs> <laughs> 